Adil Ahmed Dar, the 20-year-old school dropout who led the suicide attack at Polwama in South Kashmir on February 14, was a Jayashi Muhammad Fadehi warrior, trained for the job in the valley. He was inspired by Burhan Muzaffarwani, commander of a Kashmiri militant group Hizbol Mujahideen, earlier killed by the Indian Army, and he was also inspired by the defeat of America at the hands of the Taliban. One feared the inevitable, India will associate Pakistan with DAR and Jayashi Muhammad, the terrorist organization that Pakistan stupidly allows to survive in Bawalpur, South Punjab. A lot of anti-Pakistan rage will be manufactured in India after assuming that DAR actually crossed over into Pakistan, took instructions and money from the ISI. Indian commentator Rahul Bedi's comment came as a relief, reminding India and Pakistan to take joint action instead of getting into another war of words, most militants in Kashmir are now homegrown. Jayashi Muhammad is banned in Pakistan but its leader, Masood Azhar, is allowed to live in peace in his hometown, in his madrasa Usman O'Ali, Bawalpur. His terrorist group was earlier called Harkatul Mujahideen, associated closely with Osama bin Laden's Al-Qaeda. It became Jayish after an internal division. Malana Masood Azhar had the ability to raise funds all over the world. In 1993, Al-Qaeda was involved in the killing of 24 Pakistani soldiers in Somalia while performing duties under the UN auspices, about which Osama bin Laden was to boast later. While in disguise in India and up to no good in Kashmir Azhar was captured in 1994. In 1999, an Indian civilian aircraft was hijacked after takeoff from Nepal by a group of terrorists led by Azhar's brother, Ibrahim. The plane was taken to Afghanistan where the Taliban government, recognized by Pakistan, arranged for a swap of Indian passengers with the two Al-Qaeda terrorists, Umar Sheikh and Masood Azhar. After their release, both came to Pakistan and began operating freely. Sheikh, now in a jail in Hyderabad Sindh, came to Lahore, and Azhar went to the most powerful seminary in Pakistan, Jamia Binoria in Karachi, from where he issued threatening statements against President Pervez Musharraf. Azhar damaged Musharraf more effectively after 9-11s when he attacked the Indian parliament and caused a military standoff between Pakistan and India that lasted almost a year. He was put under house arrest in his hometown, from where he had a way of vanishing from time to time. In 2009, according to a report published in London's The Telegraph, Jayashi Muhammad had acquired a 4.5-acre compound outside Bawalpur in addition to the Madrasa Usman O'Ali inside the city. While local authorities acknowledged that Jayash had spread out of the city, they denied that the new acquisition was anything more than a cattle farm. In February 2014, Pakistan decided to break the unspoken embargo Azar's movement and got him out of his ISI-protected madrasa to speak to a public gathering of thousands in Muzaffar Abbott. His job was to castigate India for unfairly killing Afzal Guru, a freedom fighter hanged in India for allegedly helping Jayish mount an attack on the Indian parliament in 2001. Most Pakistanis are tired of the so-called Mujahideen and want India and Pakistan to cooperate instead of notching up bilateral terrorism, India feeling righteous about the Jayish threat and Pakistan preening on having captured raw agent Kulbushan Jadhav red-handed. Even if it wants to, India will not listen to good sense before the polls and Pakistan will be the hobby horse to beat up on. And Pakistan, economically belly up and subliminally dying to normalize through the Carter Per Corridor, will go on mysteriously tolerating terrorists on its soil who kill its children.